Hey friends, welcome to Chemistry Lover. And uh, just uh, today morning, uh, while I was scrolling Facebook, uh, suddenly a research paper uh, link of a research paper came uh, on my timeline, and that was basically on a recent study on nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So uh, all of you know that nucleophilic aromatic substitution is a stepwise mechanism, that is addition elimination mechanism, which is shown in this particular reaction. That is. First, the nucleophile will attack. Then, this Meissen-Hamer complex, which is a negative charge, that that will form, and finally, the substitution will occur to give you the product. But uh, the recent uh, study on some particular reactions by the Eric Jacobson and their co-workers. Co uh, so you have read the Jacobson epoxidation, right? So that uh, Eric Jacobson. And his co-workers, they uh, did study on uh, nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, and they find out a very interesting fact that uh, although we know that it is a stepwise mechanism, but it is not always like that. It may be a concerted mechanism, and most of the cases when heterocyclic compounds are involved, it is always uh, the concerted mechanism, or not the uh, stepwise addition elimination mechanism. So I will in this video I will be talking about the study that how they come to this conclusion. Now I will obviously not talk about the details of the computational study or the experimental facts. I will just uh, show you the results and uh, how they reach that and what is the actual mechanism that how this concerted mechanism is happening. So that mechanism part is very important. So if you are interested, uh, you can watch this video till then. So let's start to this topic. So, you can see these are the three reactions that they have studied and all these three substrates have different features. Okay, so in the first case you can see the leaving group is A, fluorine, which is a very bad leaving group. But in this case, uh, the groups which are present in the ring, there is aromatic uh, nitro compound, so nitro groups are there, they are very strongly electron withdrawing. Uh, that means they are very good at stabilizing negative charge. Okay. In the second case, you can see bromide, which is a very good living group uh, in compared to fluorine. That is, it is a much better living group than fluorine. But in this case, you can see uh, the uh, negative charge stabilizing group is only weakly stabilizing the ester group. So ester is uh, very less efficient in, with respect to stabilizing a negative charge in comparison to nitro group. And in this case, a uh, uh, nitrogen atom is also there in the ring. Okay. And in the third case, you can see there is good, li uh, good stabilizing group, nitro group. At the same time, the uh, leaving group is better than a uh, flu fluoride. Okay. So these are the uh, features of these three sub substrates. Now, when these three sub substrates are uh, subjected to nucleophilic aromatic substitution, you can see in the first case, yes, it is attacked attack with methoxide. So sodium, sodium methoxide is used. And in this case, you get this product. In the cell, in other two cases, uh, fluoride source that is tetramethyl, tetramethyl ammonium fluoride is used. This is a fluoride source, and fluoride is here the nucleophile. And in this case, in in the second case, you can see this is not the addition elimination reaction. Uh, after the computational study and uh, the experimental study, the kinetic isotope study that I will discuss, uh, that study shows that this react reaction is actually not a uh, uh, a stepwise mechanism rather than it, it is a concerted mechanism. So you can see the bond breaking and bond making are taking place in the same uh, step and that will give this uh, substitution product. In the third case, it is a mixed uh, concerted and a stepwise mechanism. So uh, it is not a clear cut mechanism. Uh, it is uh, it is uh, concerted as well as it is a uh, stepwise mechanism. That is, uh, it's uh, Intermediate is not well established. In this case, this mason hammer complex is well established, but in this case, you can see uh, it is not an intermediate, it is a transition state. Now, uh, that means uh, we can say that if we have very bad leaving group and strong uh, stabilizing group, uh, that is uh, strongly uh, electron withdrawing group, then the cons uh, stepwise mechanism will take place, uh, which is uh, shown in the first example. Whereas if we have a good leaving group and less uh, negative charge stabilizing group, then it will follow the concerted process. Now, how did they uh, confirm these things? Okay, so for, for that, 
I will not discuss the details of the procedure. They did computational study and experimental uh, things like uh, fluorine NMR uh, things. So uh, basically, the main thing is that they did the they they examined the kinetic isotope effect of this carbon. Okay, so kinetic isotope effect. You know that uh, we examine the uh, either the rate of the reaction with respect to C13 and C12 or we can measure other properties. So in this case, uh, they measure some other properties, not the reaction rate and uh, that kinetic isotope effect they studied. So one thing you should know is that uh, for a substitution reaction, if that reaction is concerted, that is uh, let's say any substitution reaction, a uh, normal SN2 reaction for example, let's say this is your normal SN2 reaction where you have a living group L and your nucleophile is attacking here. Now if it is a SN2 reaction that is like this LN a new if it is a new uh, SN2 reaction pure SN2 reaction that is it is a concerted reaction then what will you observe is that the kinetic isotope effect will be maximum. So for a particular living group and a particular nucleophile if the reaction follows the perfect concerted mechanism then uh, the isotope effect will be maximum. So that will have a maximum value. So we can say it uh, so kinetic isotope effect Kie max. Okay. Now uh, why this? Because in that particular case, both the NuC bond and uh, Cl bond both have uh, has the less bond character, or both bonds are broken, right? But if uh, this reaction is not concerted. Uh, there is a stepwise mechanism then this bond formation and bond breaking will not occur at the same step and then uh, this uh, kinetic isotope effect maximum value will not be achieved so then uh, the value will be very less than maximum value that may be uh, like 40 percent or 30 percent of the maximum value whereas if a uh, concerted mechanism is uh, followed then uh, that value will be 80% to 90% of the maximum value, right? Now, when uh, this kinetic isotope study is done with this particular substrate, it is observed that for this particular reaction, this kinetic isotope value is uh, of 30% uh, of the maximum value. Well, uh, some of the video recording was stopped, so I have to record it again. So that's why I skipped the middle intermediate. So what I was try trying is that, uh, trying to say is that, uh, for this particular case, when it is a stepwise mechanism, the kinetic isotope effect was 30% uh, uh, that of the maximum value. For this particular case, when it is concerted, it is 80% to that of the maximum value. And for this case, when uh, it is not con neither concerted nor uh, your stepwise, that is a mixed mechanism, then it is like uh, 60 to 70%. So this is sort of a study uh, uh, proved that so we already said that if it is a perfectly concerted then it will more close to the maximum value and that proves that this particular uh, reaction follows the concerted pathway whereas uh, this follows stepwise mechanism and this will follow the mixed uh, mechanism. Okay. So now I will uh, discuss that uh, how this can be proved. Uh, co by computational study and by using the Marcus theory or how rather how uh, it can be explained by using the Marcus theory right so as you can see these are the potential energy diagram for the three reactions this is for stepwise mechanism this is for concerted mechanism and this is for mixed case okay so for stepwise mechanism uh, what is the feature of this potential energy diagram is that you can see this is this curve is for uh, reactant this is for product and this is the energy of your Maison-Heimer complex. Now, where your potential energy curve of reactant and product bisects, that point is above uh, the energy of your Maison-Heimer complex. That is, this represents the transition state. So, in this case, if you if you if you would have a transition state transition state that will have greater energy than your mission ever complex. So that's why uh, your reaction will follow the uh, pathway where it will go through this uh, uh, go, go through this particular intermediate which is called mission ever complex. But when the reaction is concerted then what will happen is that your mission ever complex will have higher energy than the transition state. So in this case uh, at the point where your reactant and product uh, reactant and product uh, potential energy curve bisects that point is below the energy of your machine complex and that's why it will follow 
a pathway where it will go through a transition state and not the intermediate whereas in this particular case when it is a mixed case then uh, somehow this mason heimer complex energy level will bisect uh, this uh, energy of this transition state and that's why it will follow a mixed concerted and stepwise mechanism so this can be explain uh, these things uh, is consistent with the fact that uh, when uh, you have a uh, less, uh, less electron withdrawing group which cannot uh, stabilize your uh, Mesonheimer complex much and at the same time when you have a good living group that is when your uh, living group and carbon bond is uh, bond strength is weak then it will follow a concerted process because at that time uh, to fo uh, for following the concerted process it will not have to overcome much energy whereas if you have ca bond you can think if you have ca bond ca bond is very strong so uh, if the concerted uh, mechanism has to be followed then uh, at, uh, at the transition state this ca bond is broken so that means uh, it will require very high energy so that's why its energy will increase so that's why it will follow the uh, stepwise mechanism now i will show you uh, what is the exact mechanism of this concerted reaction that is what are the orbitals involved in this case and that is the most important and most interesting uh, part of this topic okay so as you can see this is your substrate right so here uh, the f minus is approaching now the homo of the f minus is basically the lone pair on f minus and that will form bond with the pi star of this cn bond so this cn bond has a double bond and it has a pi star so we consider this isolated cn bond which is like a imine and that with the pi star bond this f minus will overlap like, uh, like this okay so then what will happen this bond will be weakened so it will have a single bond character not a double bond character because when a uh, f minus will put electron on the pi star bond that means the pi bond will be broken okay so that means the negative charge will grow on this nitrogen and we can represent it by a p orbital right so when the bond is formed like this when the bond is formed like this f minus is here so it, it is forming a bond and you will have a negative charge which is growing on the nitrogen atom so now uh, you can see the nitrogen one negative charge is growing here and already the nitrogen has a lone pair which is on the plane of the molecule and this cbr bond is also on the plane of the molecule now this cbr bond has a sigma star right although the sigma star has highest coefficient on this two terminal but there is a little coefficient also at the middle so this sigma star and this nitrogen sp hybrid so this is basically sp2 hybrid and this is your sigma star so you can see this symmetry of this sigma star and this sp hybrid they exactly match okay so they can now overlap so if they overlap what will happen the, your br minus will now gain a negative charge and it will leave so the whole thing we can represent like this okay so here you have the nitrogen and uh, now your f minus is forming a bond like this so your double bond character is reducing and at the same time you have this cbr bond which is breaking and this new double bond is forming here okay you can see so uh, uh, this is the exact mechanism of the reaction and another thing you should notice that uh, in all this course what is happening this p orbital which was initially forming the pi bond within the uh, aromatic ring system that is now involved in bond bonding this uh, in forming the sigma bond because this pi star uh, which is a part of the pi orbital system that is now forming the bond with this uh, uh, upcoming fluorine right so there will be a rotation of this bond so this bond will rotate right so this bond if it rotates then you will have a new pi bond over here and this fluorine will come into the plane so at first the fluorine will be above the plane like this and bromine will be below the plane but after that the bond will rotate because why the bond rotation is possible although it is a double bond but you can see in the transition state the double bond character is reducing so that's why the bond rotation is possible and also for this overlap to occur this uh, nitrogen sp orbital which is basically converting to the p orbital for this uh, overlap uh, overlap of this sp2 with this sigma star orbital to happen it has to rotate and after that rotation the new pi uh, p orbital uh, new pi bond will form and this f uh, will come in the plane so that's how this orbital interaction will take place and which will uh, lead to the formation of this product so this is a very interesting mechanism and uh, uh, study over uh, several heterocyclic compounds proved that uh, in most 
most of the cases including heterocyclic compounds uh, this mechanism is followed that is concerted mechanism and not the stepwise mechanism and uh, some no, non heterocyclic compounds also they follow the uh, concerted mechanism so basically uh, stepwise mechanism is only followed when your leaving group is bad and your um, um, aromatic ring has very strong electron uh, withdrawing groups which can stabilize the mason amer complex so that's all and i will put the link of the paper in the description section you can read and if you like this video then give a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and if you are new to this channel and want more videos like that uh, you can subscribe my channel thank you for watching